My vagina is like Newark. Men know it's there, but they don't want to visit. Being so hard on yourself in psychology is a huge issue. In comedy, is a huge talent, and wow, John had it. However, I feel this joke is about a specific vagina, hers, not about vaginas in general. So even though I am a man, the worst person to express an opinion about a vagina joke, I will be brave and give it a go, John. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Judas of Disturbia. I am Raf K. Wolf, known in the world of Wattpad as Cameron Wolf. And this episode is all about the icon, the legend, the fabulous, the only fashion icon slash comedian, John Rivers. This is maybe that one episode in which I get cancelled before getting popular. But this is a tribute to someone I always found fascinating. As I always say, my dogs are with me. So if you listen to the cutest sounds in the world, those are my boys. Listen, I was born in 1987. In 2010, I was a 22 to 23 year old gay man to whom fashion was a bit more or a lot more than only art, which is what fashion means to me now. I used to watch every award show, the Emmys, the Golden Globes, and of course the Oscars, and obviously the red carpet and the previews and post shows for each of those awards shows. The E! Entertainment Television broad broadcast, of course. It was obvious that I was going to end up finding the jewel that Fashion Police was at the time. It was in my destiny. And yes, anyone watching that show today would pretty possibly be alarmed by all the pretty possibly offensive jokes, especially by the host, iconic comedian Joan Rivers. But if we are honest, comedians like her were telling those jokes and we were laughing at many of them. If you are one of the people that see most of the past of comedy as problematic, we were part of the problem too. Think about that. And Jean was considered a savage comedian, even when comedy in general was mostly savage. She was unapologetic and she firmly believed that we have to laugh about the worst things of life so we can handle them and survive all the shit we go through. And I agree. It is not the same to be extremely unsuc unsuccessful and die crying about it than to be extremely unsuccessful and still find some comedy on it. Laugh about it, find a way to smile despite the circumstances and keep trying to get out of the mess. And you can easily see that on her comedy. She would have no limits, which makes her comedy a type of anti-millennial comedy. The way I understand this is by simply accepting that we are living in different times now. But today's Twitter would have cancelled her more than one time, I'm sure. She was, in fact, savage. I remember, for example, the way on an episode of Fashion Police, Jean called January Jones simply slut, or maybe whore, for wearing that fabulous red Versace fringe dress. And I have to say, I tried to find the clip to confirm the word, and I didn't find it. Sorry about that. I think January looks simply gorgeous, especially if they did that look today. And let me be clear, I think that joke slash comment went too far for real. I actually found a clip in which on the same episode, uh, George Kotsiopoulos, one of John's co-hosts, Pick January as his best dress that night. And John said, oh, please, she should be a waitress at Caesar's Palace. That one's quite cute, though, but I remember pretty well that on the same episode, she said much more about January's look. I actually think that January talked about this on an interview on a magazine. I don't remember pretty well. I also remember the time Jean used a prosthetic leg to make fun of Angelina Jolie's height, slit, also Versace dress, and her posing at the 2012 Academy Awards. Super wrong. Even considering the fact that Jean wasn't the only one making fun of that. The internet was full of memes after Angelina wore that dress. And yes, maybe I didn't laugh about those two jokes. But being honest, I think I may have left when she called Paris Hilton's pose on the red carpet the vagina pose or something like that. Another clip I can't find, so I'm not sure if it even happened. What I'm saying is, before critiquing Joan, remember she was a comedian for a different time, which equals a different audience, and we as an audience have evolved. But Joan sadly died and her comedy for a long period of time stayed there in the past. However, 
Recently, I have found a new community of comedians brave enough to endorse some of her most controversial material. In my humble and ignorant opinion, yes, I have seen the evolution of the audience, but we went from one pole to the other, didn't we? I think we still have a long way to go, and that is such a challenge for comedians today, because comedy should reflect society. And if society is and should be evolving so fast, comedians need to be so careful and keep moving at the same speed and not getting trapped in the past. Actually, Jones' daughter, Melissa Rivers, was questioned by Heather McDonald in an interview with the Juicy Scoop podcast about all of this and how good have Jones adjusted to the cancel culture climate we have gone through in the last years if she was still alive. And Melissa pretty smartly said that from her point of view, which let me tell you, is the point of view of someone who knows and understands Jones' comedy up and down, back and forth. Jones' comedy wouldn't have changed. Melissa says that some of the wording would have had to change, but that she would make cancel culture a part of the act, addressing the topic. Saying, for example, I am not allowed to say this, but and I still tell the joke, the same joke. And let me be honest, I think that that would have been a really smart approach to comedy in this era. And it may have worked pretty well. The day she died, September 4, 2014, Vulture.com published the 50 best Joan Rivers jokes, a compilation of some of her best one-liner jokes from her stand-up comedy and her comedy in general, put together by Adam K. Raymond. In this episode, I will react to all of those jokes and rate them. I will give them a go, John, for jokes that, according to me, can still be told today, a uh, no, John, to those that even though they work in the past, today they could be considered inappropriate, offensive, or not current. And a pass to those jokes I prefer not to rate. But remember that this is for today, a day in September of 2022. Also, and pretty important, this is according to my opinion only. I don't have and no one has the right to tell you what you should be offended about or not, period. There's people who would think I am made of crystal, others would want to cancel me. I guess we all react different to things. Actually, if there's one or more jokes in which you consider that I was wrong with the rate I gave it, leave me a good review. And on that review, comment to which specific joke you have a different opinion than me. And I will address those comments in another episode. Before you listen to these jokes, I need to tell you that some are about suicide, violence, and drug addiction, which I know can be distressing for some people. This is a trigger warning. If you're having a bad time right now, find help. Google a phone number in the United States. You can call to the number 988, I repeat, 988, for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. It is available 24 hours. Another warning, I suck at telling jokes. Let's see how I do reading them. Let's start with the first one. Number one, I have no sex appeal. If my husband didn't toss and turn, we had never had the kid. Accidental baby joke. Honestly, if you go deeper into what it means, it could be taken as inappropriate and wrong, but I think the intention of it is pretty inoffensive. So we're starting with a go, John. Number two, people say that money is not the key to happiness, but I always figure if you have enough money, you can have the key made. This one's pretty smart, actually. I think it is a statement. I don't agree with it completely, but, it, but in certain situations, when health is not an issue, it could totally apply. I think it is a completely innocent joke. It's a go, John. I was born in 1962, and the room next to me was 1963. <laughs> the most inoffensive type of joke someone can tell you. Go, John. My question is, was John born at a hotel or maybe at a hospital with a lot of birthing suites? Number four, the first time I see a jogger smiling, I'll consider it. It's funny because I actually dare you to find someone smiling while jogging. That would be so weird. Well, actually, Rob Lowe's character on Parks and Recreation, who was obsessed with being active and working out, would smile while jogging. But only him. This joke, though, in offensiveness, could be a zero. But in this era when people talk about working out, most of them would do it to encourage you to do it. 
This joke exposes the fact that she, as most people, doesn't enjoy jogging too much. So maybe it is not too current, but shouldn't hurt anyone. So go, John. Number five, my best birth control now is just to leave the lights on. <laughs> I will quote Adam from the Bultur article here. She was at her best when she directed her venom at herself. And he was so right when he wrote this. Maybe that is one of the reasons why Joan's comedy works so well. Because she left about herself first. In my experience, once you learn how to make fun of yourself, the audience can throw stones at you, but you will stay strong on stage. This is definitely a joke about appearance, but I wonder if the joke doesn't tackle any specific appearance factor that could trigger someone's personal issues, is it still offensive? I'll say go John. Number six, I have had so much plastic surgery. When I die, they will donate my body to Tupperware. <laughs> well, it is again about herself. And this is a topic she would always laugh about. Her plastic surgery procedures she was so open about. But it can totally trigger someone's insecurities. Uh, there's people dealing with bad health issues and other consequences of bad plastic surgery. This is something people talk about research and write about every day. For example, Zac Efron's face seems to be a topic of its own nowadays. It actually feels invasive, but sometimes it seems as if you have to be so careful when you talk about this. And I repeat, people is not careful when they talk about this, but I think they should. So I will give this joke a no John. Number seven, my vagina is like Newark. Men know it's there, but they don't want to visit. Being so hard on yourself in psychology is a huge issue. In comedy, is a huge talent, and wow, John had it. However, I feel this joke is about a specific vagina, hers, not about vaginas in general. So even though I am a man, the worst person to express an opinion about a vagina joke, I will be brave and give it a go, John. Number eight, a man can sleep around, no questions asked. But if a woman makes 19 or 20 mistakes, she's a tramp. <laughs> True, this is a statement more than a joke, and we're still dealing with this double standard shit. Go, John. Number nine, I wish I had a twin so I could know what I would look like with a plastic surgery. Another joke about her plastic surgery, but it is so inoffensive that I will give it a go, John. However, would John's twin resist wanting to look like her sister? Maybe not. So maybe she would have a lot of procedures too. Number 10, I hate housework. You make the beds, you do the dishes, and six months later, you have to start all over again. <laughs> Genius. Current, a temporal hits so close to reality that it hurts. Go, John. Uh, trigger warning again. Number 11, my husband killed himself and it was my fault. We were making love and I took the back of my head. Uh, pretty inappropriate and triggering in many ways. No, John, not a joke for 2022. 12, when I was born, my mother asked the doctor, will she live? He said, only if you take your foot off her throat. I'm sure this, this was a pretty innocent joke back in the day, but it talks about violence against a child. No, John. My earliest childhood memory was watching my parents loosen the wheels on my stroller. She can stop! This is pretty violent too. No, John. Number 14. Don't talk to me about Valentine's Day. At my age, an affair of the heart is a bypass. Oh my god. Painfully accurate to many. I would like to say no, John, because there's people suffering with bypasses every day and I don't want to support laughing at that. However, isn't that what John said? If that person with a bypass can laugh about their own situation, maybe that could be positive for them and help them get better. I would say go, John. Number 15, my breasts are so low, now I can have a mammogram and a pedicure at the same time. <laughs> oh my god, I think this joke is clever and innocent, and it is not a cancer joke. It is a hanging breast joke, which is a reality on some women. Laughing about it can make them feel better if needed. However, because I am a man, I will pass on this one. Number 16, I was the only Jewish kid in a Catholic neighborhood. They all did Hail Marys, I did Hail Murrays. I'll be honest, I do not understand this one. I tried to Google about it, but I'm not sure, so I will pass again. Number 17, 
You know it's time to start using mouthwash when your dentist leaves the room and sends in a canary. I don't get it either. Why a canary? What do canaries do or like? Pass. Number 18. Don't tell your kids you had an easy birth or they won't respect you. For years, I used to wake up my daughter and say, Melissa, you raped me to shreds. Now go back to sleep. (laughs) This is super funny and clever, I guess. I think that in some cases, if your mom did this almost as a joke, it can be considered funny. But if you went through life with a psycho mother, this is potentially triggering. It could take a no zone or maybe a go zone in many different cases. So I will pass. Number 19. I blame my mother for my poor sex life. All she told me was, the man goes on top and the woman goes underneath. For three years, my husband and I slept in bunk beds. (laughs) This is probably the funniest joke I've read in this episode. Uh, It tackles a pretty current topic too, sex education. And it does it, to my opinion, in a pretty accurate and respectful way. It's a go on for me. Number 20. Princess Diana and the Queen are driving down the lane when their car is forced off the road by masked thieves. Out of the car and hang over your jewels. After the thieves rob them and steal their car, Diana begins to put her earrings, necklace, and rings back on. Wherever did you hide those? demanded the queen. Where do you think? asked Diana. Pity Margaret wasn't here, said the queen. We could have saved the Bentley. Oh my god, this is harsh. And it is weird to read it just a few days after Queen Elizabeth II died. Rest in peace, by the way, Queen. Uh, Listen, for many reasons, I pass. 21. I was so ugly. They sent my picture to replace Believe It or Not. And he sent it back and said, I don't believe it. (laughs) This is a triumph. Go, John. I'll say something, though. Lately, I've been thinking about appearance and beauty standards, and I came to the conclusion that from my perspective, no one is ugly. I'll make an episode about that, maybe. Number 22. California is droggy, droggy, droggy. If it is white and it is on the table, they are going to sniff it. I have a friend who owed it in the beauty shop on Dandruff. <laughs> this is Super funny. However, because I know that even though talking about drugs is so common nowadays, there are a lot of people struggling with addiction and I'm not the right person to say, just laugh about it and you will feel better. So I will pass. Number 23. The women in California, they get scared. A guy flashes you, they go to the police. He's flashing, he's flashing. In New York, a guy flashes you, you took your embroidery hoop and play ring stuffs. This is funny too. If you don't think about it twice. But again, this is not a joke for today. All the abuse exposed on the media has to be taken seriously. No, John. Number 24. Don't you hate McDonald's? I heard you can get a job there unless you have a skin condition. I do not have the context for this joke, so I will pass it. However, I'll say that McDonald's is the ultimate guilty pleasure for me. I actually consider the Quarter Pounder the best burger ever. Yes, that's who I am. Number 25. Stevie Wonder, that poor son of a bitch. Who's going to tell him he's wearing a macrame plank holder on his head? Oh my god, John. Uh, This is not a joke you can or should make today. It is disrespectful and it is not about you. It actually reminds me of the joke that Juliana Rancy, Jones' co-host on Fashion Police, made about Zendaya's hairstyle years ago. That one got Juliana in huge trouble. No, John. Number 26. When the rabbi said, do you take this man? 14 guys said, she has. My husband bought the horseback riding story. Thank God. Oh my god, it's innocent, I guess. Who cares about virginity anymore? I could say go, John, but because they are talking about a, a rabbi, maybe I will just pass. Number 27. Lindsay Lohan said she wouldn't mind being under oath because she thought oath was a Norwegian, or however you say, Nor- Norwegian ski, ski instructor. And oh my god. This one makes fun of a woman's right to decide over her body. The fact of being the owner of her own sexuality. So it is not a current joke and this is not a struggle to anyone the way I understand it. It is just judgment. 
No, John. Number 28. Elizabeth Taylor is so fat, she puts mayonnaise on aspirin. Not a current approach to comedy. What about body positivity? No, John. Number 29. If Kate Winslet had dropped a few pounds, the Titanic wouldn't have never sunk. Again, not a current approach. What about body positivity? No, John. Number 30. You want to get Cindy Crawford confused? Ask her to spell mom backwards. This is the dumb model slash supermodel narrative, classic humor. Do you know what? I feel like a lot of models prove all these jokes wrong. Maybe getting offended by this is too stupid for a smart girl. When someone calls you dumb, you show them who is the dumb one. I guess you can get offended if someone calls you dumb. However, that's an opportunity to prove them wrong. Don't listen to what I think though. Protect your feelings. But that's what I think. Go, John. Number 31, I was so flat, I used to put X's on my chest and write, you are here. I wore Angora sweaters just so the guys could have something to pet. Small boob jokes, small dick jokes, yes, this could also be taken as offensive, but, but this was about herself, and that is the dilemma, because it can trigger your own insecurities. However, if a joke like this can be triggering to you, do not expose yourself to Jones' comedy, maybe. I will pass. Number 33, I blame myself for David Guest. It was me who told Liza Minnelli to find a man who wouldn't sleep with other women. Again, not a joke for this era, and I do think that bearded relationships, if the person you're marrying doesn't know the truth, are wrong all the way, because you cannot use a person and lie to a person like that. I also want to give an advice to people who get into relationships with a gay person of their opposite sex, with the idea of I will change him or I will change her because I am the macho she needs. No, you won't change them. They are still gay, lesbian. However, I don't know the man John is referring to in here. And even if it was true, it was not a reason to joke about them. No, John. Number 33, the whole Michael Jackson thing was my fault. I told him to date only 28 year olds. Who knew he would find 20 of them? Ha harsh, inappropriate, and hurtful. This is the type of joke that makes you think that 20, 10, and maybe even 8 years ago, comedy and society in general were the same as living not in another time, but in another planet. My view of this is that we evolve. Just comedians have gone through a tough time, even when maybe in the case of many of them, their intentions were never to be harsh, inappropriate, and hurtful to people. But maybe cancel culture, even when it has been so toxic, was needed. The same way the recessions are needed to clean the economy from companies that are not beneficial for the markets. Maybe what cancel culture was, was an obstacle, which only the best comedians could be able to survive. The comedians with the talent to understand society well enough to reflect it well enough to actually help us deal with the mess that the world is today, which is not the same world we live in eight years ago. Maybe cancel culture was the recession for comedy and only the best comedians survived. And I think that John would have definitely survived, but this joke wouldn't. So it's a no John. And by the way, I don't think this is the first time comedy was forced to evolve. This was not the first recession of comedy. If you watch a stand-up comedy special from the 80s, which I did once, you would be potentially offended today and also in the 90s. Number 34, I finally found how priests get holy water. They boil the hell out of it. So, so smart. This may not be offensive, even from some pretty religious people. So it's a go, John, for me. Number 35, and since we are all adults here, let's be brutally honest. Most babies are not actually attractive. In fact, they are weird and freakish looking. A large percentage of them are squinty-eyed and bald and their faces are all mushed together. Kind of like Rene Selweger push up against a glass window. The word attractive sounds weird here. She meant like beautiful. But this is a joke people still do. Babies are ugly. And also, it seems as if Renée Zellweger was a favorite of Joan to joke about and Renée seemed to ignore the fact. Let me know if that's not the case. So in conclusion, I don't see how to know Joan this joke and how to go Joan it either. 
So I will pass from giving an opinion because I don't have one. By the way, Renée Zellweger is one of my favorite actresses ever. Actually, when I was like 12, I wrote pages about her transformations for movies and how she's so great at building characters. I'm still a huge fan of Renée. Number 36, the most beautiful women in the world are always the dumbest. The most beautiful woman in the world, Bo Derek. This woman's an idiot. She studied for pap test. As harsh as a joke can get, and with a clear target. Classic, common joke, but not for these times. And hopefully we don't come back to a time in which calling a woman or anyone dumb is a reason to laugh. Let's celebrate other things about women. No, John. You know what? I'd apply what Melissa say. John would maybe do. Let's change this joke a little bit. This could probably be John's version today. I am not allowed to say this, but the most beautiful women in the world are always the dumbest. The most beautiful woman in the world, Bo Derek, this woman is an idiot. She studies for her pap test. No, still wrong. Still no, John. Number 37. I was dating a proctologist with a sense of humor. We'd go out for drinks. He'd go, bottoms up. <laughs> Super funny and no one gets offended. You see? Go, John. Number 38, I was dating a transvestite and my mother said, marry him, you'll double your wardrobe. Um, this is not a transphobic joke, maybe. First, the word transvestite, is it still used this way or is it crossdresser? I don't know. Second, the pronoun. The problem here is that even when John is in a way flattered in the wardrobe of someone who dresses as the opposite sex, who constantly are the best dressed people, she's also assuming this person would use the him pronoun. Ultimately, I feel that the T in LGBTQ plus has and is being treated so poorly, they have been so abused and disrespected that there should not be any joke about them, not even if done in the cleverest, more informed and respectful way. The life of the T is not to laugh about in any way because their life is always in danger. John wasn't the problem in these times, these jokes were common and she's actually trying to be respectful for the time when she told this joke but today it is incorrect that is what i am saying as an audience as a society we evolve into a place in which it is not about comedy being limited but comedy being filtered into a place in which reflecting society is not the same as affecting society or contributing to it because one of the last things that he needs is someone laughing about she him them one innocent joke about the tea is going to be taken by transphobic people as another weapon against them. So this joke is a no, John. You don't mean bad, but better no. Number 39. I was dating a football player. He was so dumb. The man could not count to 21 unless he was naked. The dumb joke again. I'll just say no, John. It is just not a current joke. Diminishing someone is not a smart joke for today. It is just rude. Did you hear Tom Cruise just had a baby? He was there when he was born. He should have been there when he was conceived. This is me, based on rumors, but I think it's inoffensive. I think it depends on when it came out. Go John, I guess? Number 41, my sex life is so bad. My G-spot has been declared a historical landmark. In this joke, she's not attacking anyone but herself. I think not even women in general, to my opinion. So I will say go, Jean. Number 42. I knew I was an unwanted baby when I saw that my bad toys were a toaster and a radio. This one would be so inoffensive back then too, but now it is giving me images of violence only. So it wouldn't be good, I think. No, Jean. Number 43, I saw my first porno film recently. It was a Jewish porno film, one minute of sex and nine minutes of guilt. This one may be funny and it could be applied to a lot of religious people, not only Jewish people, but I am not going to laugh about Jewish people, never, or about nothing related to religion and race. Jean was Jewish, maybe she was able to do it, but I support taking religion and race out of comedy. That is just wrong and a ticket to an easy fight no one needs. So no Jean. Number 44, not all plastic surgeons are good. My cousin went to one and told him she wanted to turn back the hands of time. Now she has a face that could stop a clock. Oh my god. This one's mean. 
but it doesn't have a direct target. We don't even know who that cow thing is. So it may be inoffensive. So go, John. Number 45. Everybody talks about multiple orgasm. Multiple orgasm. I am lucky if both sides of my toaster pop. <laughs> this is funny and simple. Go, John. M number 46. Madonna has just lost 30 pounds. She shaved her legs. It is funny, I guess, but also pretty mean. And I think that when your joke targets someone so directly, you are on the edge of bullying. And I always be against bullying. So, no, John. Never. Number 47. On the Vanna White diet, you only eat what you can spell. <laughs> this one is funny and innocent. Diets from those years are a no-no today for some people. But today, almost everyone has a diet specific for themselves. Some are vegan, paleo, etc. So joking about that is not that bad. But some people are struggling with eating habits and it could be triggering. So I will pass. This is controversial. However, the Vanna White Wheel of Fortune reference was pretty cool here. Number 48. The one thing women do not want to find in their stockings on Christmas morning is their husband. <laughs> Innocent, but I think a lot of women would like to have their husbands in their stockings. Go John, though. Number 49. I got a water bed, but my husband stuck it with a throat. <laughs> Innocent, though. Maybe, I don't know. Go, John, but don't be married to people you don't absolutely love. Number 50. This is the last one of this marathon. Uh, want to know why women don't blink during foreplay? Not enough time. <laughs> I am gay. I can't give an opinion about women's foreplay, but I think I get it. So go, John. If it is to defend women's right to a great sexual life, a great sexual relationship, then yeah, go John. And that was the last joke for this John Rivers one-liner jokes marathon. Let me tell you something, people. This episode may suck, but I am 100% aware that the reception of comedy is different for different people. I know some people may be wanting to cancel me because of some joke I didn't think John should be canceled for and others may be thinking I'm so offended about everything but I am not here to tell you what to be offended about. Be proud of your own feelings. I was watching recently a clip from John's stand-up comedy and if I remember well, that one is included on her magnificent documentary. In that clip, she's making a raw and savage joke about deaf children, I think. And a man on the audience yells at her. He gets pretty offended because his son or daughter is deaf. And I understand this man. The reaction Jung had is interesting because she gets obviously defensive and nervous and she curses. But the argument she uses makes sense the whole way. She tells him how her mother was deaf and how, according to her, to John, comedy is supposed to make us laugh about the unfortunate things of life so we can deal with them. And I agree with that too. And that is how I am trying to understand comedy and how I am dealing with the fact that I still think that John was and is an excellent comedian. I am trying to live about the things that don't go well in my life because if I don't, I will die. I don't know a lot about John, actually. I read her Diary of a Mad Diva years ago and I think it was an okay book. I don't remember pretty well, but I still find her so funny and I do not think she ever had bad intentions. Never. I also have the coffee table book in which she's on the cover wearing that magnificent Bob Mackie dress. And that one is full of one-liner jokes that she kept for years before she died. Maybe in the future I will react to those two. This was my attempt to honor a pretty special woman who I think we should never forget. Keep evolving, keep treating people with respect. And if you are a comedian, don't stop observing and don't stop moving. That is it for today. Thanks for listening and come back for the next episode. Bye.